In my previous video, I taught you how to install Fish along with Tide, a plugin which is pretty much the power level 10k of Fish Shell. So today I'm going to teach you how to actually configure it properly. The first thing you do, obviously, is run Tide Configure, and you get to this menu where you can choose whatever you want. So I'm going to pick Lane True Color, which will use uh, the full 256 colors, which are possible in a terminal emulator, or just 16. Up to you, depending on, I guess, if you can support it or not, then you can pick the time, but don't worry because you can actually add it back later. It takes more effort, but you could omit it right now. Then I want two lines, disconnected, sparse, you can even add icons, I don't want them, so no and overwrite. If you look at my shell prompt right now, you can see that it hasn't changed. That's the cool part about the Tide plugin compared to Power Level 10K. On Z Shell, what you would have to do is then go back to the file and revert all the changes that Power Level 10K configure did for you. But in Tide, your personal changes and the changes made by Tide configure are separate. So all of the things that I set up in the way that I want actually stayed that way, and things that I didn't set could actually change. First of all, let's talk about the colors and how you recolor stuff. First of all, you can see that I have a few elements here. So first of all, the current working directory, and then the get thing. It shows me what branch I'm currently on, as well as other information. After moving to a more active directory, I guess, you can see that there is a single stash and three modified files. And then on a separate line, we have the prompt character. So the big question is obviously, how do you add or remove elements from your prompt? You can figure it out by reading the wiki of the Tide plugin. Here you are on the main page, you can press wiki and then configuration. And here you go, this will actually have all the information you need, almost, to configure everything. The most important part is understanding how the variables are going to be called. Every variable in Tide starts with Tide underscore and then insert header and then the actual variable name. This variable, for example, in full will be called Tide underscore prompt underscore icon connection. And this kind of idea applies to every single thing that you see here. And the other important thing, I already mentioned that your personal changes don't conflict with the changes that the plugin makes. And the way that works is you setting your variables in config.fish. So here you can see a couple of things that are already set. So it is indeed, as I explained, set dash g to make a global variable tight character icon and then I specify it. The next thing that I want to talk about is items, meaning all of the things that you could possibly add to your prompt. Now technically you could add all of them if you wanted to, but I'm going to explain the most useful ones. So before I forget, let me show you how to actually add them or other to where. So we have this variable called tight left prompt items. It will contain a list of all the items that you want to put in your left prompt specifically. And then also you have a right prompt, which would appear from the right. And actually you can even have the upper right prompt and lower, which I don't think I've seen in other shells. So you just specify thing after thing, putting spaces between them, and that's the entire way you do it. And if you want to disable the right prompt, for example, or maybe even have only the right one and disable the left one. I don't know if that's possible, I haven't tried. Well, you just specify nothing after the variable. This will, I'm pretty sure, unset it. But in the left prompt, I specify thing after thing of the items that I actually want in my prompt. The one important element that you should know first is new line. That is how you make a multi-line prompt. And as you can see, it is two lines, first pretty much everything and then the prompt character and you can see that the next item is character meaning prompt character so now we know two elements already and as you can see character is indeed here the other thing is command duration this is the amount of time it took to execute the previous command and you can specify the threshold at which it will start appearing how precise it is and everything else 
If we click on there, we actually go to that element and you can see all of the configuration options that are there. Setting the color, number of decimals to display after the seconds place. I remember I specified four there, but it only displayed three. I'm not sure why that's the case, but I feel like you should also know about it. You can specify the icon that you use and threshold, as I said, how many milliseconds does a command have to run to get the command duration for it. If you set it to zero, it will always appear, almost always. I'm still unsure why it doesn't appear literally always, but could be a skill issue on my part. So under every element, we see this table of the settings that you can set for it. And instead of going through every single one of them, really I recommend for you to go through them because there might be things that I don't find interesting, but you would, like background color, for example. I don't use that, but maybe you would. Going through this is actually very interesting because you can make very specific changes sometimes, which are very fun. So this video is more like a way uh, to help you help yourself and explain the overall useful things that you might want to consider. So context is the your username and the host that you use Linux in. By default, and well, I have it here somewhere. Yeah, I do. It doesn't show up because I'm not in SSH and I'm not in root mode. But if I was, it would actually display. That is the default and I love it quite a lot. Now, I think the most useful thing that is not the current working directory is Git. So git repository status, as I showed you already, this thing. And in case there's some symbol that you don't understand what it means, once again, in the wiki, in the wiki, in the wiki, you can press what do the git icons mean? And here are the explanations. Maybe I just happen to never read the power level 10k docs, but I feel like that's not a thing there. And it was so obviously visible in the tight plugin. So I count that as an advantage. Here we have another element, jobs, so presence of background jobs. I don't think it shows you the number of them though, and I'm not sure if you can change that. Once again, maybe I'm stupid private mode, and this is interesting information that I just learned, is the fact that you can create a shell session in private mode. So once we open it, first of all, we're gonna get a <laughs> incognito symbol, which is very cute and also the shell level, another element that we'll get to. And whatever I execute here, wait, <laughs> let's actually do it the opposite way. Let's go back to our previous shell and try to look at the history. It won't be there. So in private sessions, you can do all of the commands that you want to explicitly remove from your history. If you're setting credentials, for example, Private mode is perfect for that, so remember fish and then dash capital P. And the tight prompt, as you can see, provides you a symbol that makes sure you understand you're in a anonymous shell session. Now, shell level. Here it is. So current level of nested shells, because turns out if you type in fish to reload your fish, and make all the config changes actually apply, you're not restarting your shell, you're creating a new one. I used to do it by accident all the time in the past, but on Z shell, Linux took an incredible amount of RAM from me, and I couldn't really understand why. Well, that's because I had 50 shells or something. So don't do that. What you should be doing is either be in the second shell level and then if you want to update like basically reboot the shell press ctrl d or type in exit and then go into fish again so you're in the second level again so you don't have a bunch of shells that you're not going to be using and by the way if you close the tab it will also close all of those shell sessions now pwd is the most important element current directory. So this thing, status, shows you the exit code of the last command. So if I type in something that doesn't exist, we will see a error here, and it's 127, the error for an unknown command. So not only do you understand that the command failed, you also understand the error code of it, if it's any way specific. Usually error codes are just one, 
The cool part of it is that it also supports piping, so this returned 1, meaning it failed, and by the way, false is a default thing that returns 1. This thing was completed successfully, so it returned 0, and we can see it in the error code, the exact pipe where something errored out. Very useful. Remember me telling you that you can actually add the time later? Well, we have the element of time. By default, it shows you the hour, minute, and second, but I didn't want to put seconds there, so I could set a variable that formats it with only hours and minutes. And as it says, it uses date formatting, so it's a built-in command in Linux. So anytime you're not quite happy with some of the elements, Check out what can you actually set in them, because often there will be a solution. And now we end at the element that we already looked at, new line. So pick all the elements that you actually want and put them in your left prompt or right prompt, separate them however you want. Pretty much all the settings in the tight config are self-explanatory or easily figureoutable. Sure, that's a word, but I want to cover something that's not immediately explained there. Colors and how you're supposed to set them. Essentially, anytime the Tide plugin expects a color, it expects something that set color, this command that I'm gonna link in the description, would accept. What does set color accept? First of all, these 16 default colors for any terminal. So you can use the word like yellow or green or red. And it actually depends on your color scheme of your terminal emulator. Or otherwise, you can actually specify the hex code for your color. And this is actually exactly what I do to make sure that the colors of my fish shell prompt are the same no matter what. Even if I change my color scheme now, my shell prompt will look exactly the same. But if you want to do the opposite and make sure it changes with the theme, just use the words of the 16 colors. So here I specified a bunch of hex codes and actually made them into variables that I can then use. And here I set one of the options to this variable color. If you are also a VS Code user and maybe you want to take the colors of your current color scheme into your shell, what you could do is type in tokens after pressing Control shift p So inspect editor tokens and scopes. And now the cursor, the color that your cursor is on will have that color. You just copy it and then set whatever you want to that color. Another thing that's not only not explained in the Tide wiki, but actually isn't handled at all, by the Tide plugin is the actual syntax highlighting. So currently, what I'm typing in has its own colors. You can actually change them. And the way you do it is by setting these variables, which is what I do here. So I'm going to leave a link to this page in the description. You kind of have to scroll a bit, so it's easier to just search for fish color normal. And here you go. Another piece of useful configuration is changing your cursor shape depending on the Vim mode that you're on. So currently I'm in normal mode, now I'm insert mode, so the cursor becomes a line, and then when I press R, it goes down. The way I set that is this. In fish, default means normal mode. Insert is insert mode, replace, and so on. All of those are understandable, but default is normal mode, not insert weirdly enough. And these variables are explained in the same actual page with an added explanation that you can add blink, which will, well, make your cursor blink. Don't worry though, you don't use Vim mode by default. By default, it uses Emacs mode just like any other shell, but you can enable Vim mode by running this command. Once, actually. You don't have to put it in config.fish, matter of fact, you shouldn't. It's just something that you run once. By the way, I stream now. And all of this I typed in and figured out while streaming, trying out fish shell for the second time. The first time I had a horrible experience because the thing that I just showed off to you, changing your cursor shape, just didn't work. Just straight up didn't work. But this time it actually did and a lot of other things I was able to figure out and had a few streams where I was setting all of that up. So if you're interested in that, you can actually watch all of the stream VODs 
that I'm going to be linking in the description. So, if this video was useful to you, press a like, type some comment, maybe have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!